Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral in Glasgow for this service. My name is Kelvin Holdsworth and I'm the provost here. It's still Eastertide and there's still alleluias in the air as we continue to celebrate the resurrection. This week we hear Jesus say, I am the true vine, and he invites us to abide in him. In this service, let us do just that, keeping this time as our own holy time and space, giving ourselves the chance to enjoy being with God and with one another. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you graft us on to Christ, the true vine, and with tireless care you nurture our growth in knowledge and reverence. Tend the vineyard of your church, that in Christ each branch may bring forth to the glory of your name abundant fruits of faith and love. Grant this through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch, and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Over the last year, people in the UK have spent billions of pounds renovating their homes. Santander reported the submission of over 60,000 planning applications during the first period of lockdown. Gardens have been the most popular area to renovate, followed by living room, bedroom, and kitchen projects. Joe and I are represented in these statistics. We now have a new mustard, although Joe says it's actually mango, accent wall in our lounge. Staying at home has changed how we see the places we live mainly because we're spending a whole lot more time in them. When asked why renovators chose to invest in their living spaces, almost two-thirds said it was to make their home feel comfortable. Folk have reimagined what and where leisure space looks like. Of course, staying at home has changed more than people's decor. Scientists reckon stay-at-home orders, when implemented, dramatically decrease the spread of COVID. Avoiding going out saves lives. It has protected entire countries' populations, and unfortunately, not staying home has had deleterious effects. In today's Gospel, Jesus talks about staying home, using the image of a vine as our connection to God, our root. And in the time to come when Jesus' disciples will venture out into the world on their own, they will need to stay attached to it. He tells his disciples to abide, to make their home with God, to be home-loving people. This past week, the provost and I were talking about the easing of restrictions over recent days. With things opening back up, pubs, restaurants, and shops in the city were abuzz with activity, preparing for a new influx of custom. You know, though, said Kelvin, I find myself feeling a little nostalgic. Shocked, I was like, nostalgic about what? Lockdown? And to my surprise, Kelvin talked about the past year, giving him a new appreciation for the simple life. I must admit, I'm probably not much one for the simple life by nature. It's not that I enjoy things complicated, but sitting at home is not my idea of a good time. I like exploring, going out. I don't particularly appreciate staring at the same four walls for too long. And I reckon that, for many other people with itchy feet, they, like me, are eager to put the homebody life behind them. But I wonder, in light of today's Gospel and in respect of our recent pandemic experiences, if we're about to run out the door too quickly. Is the Provost right? Is there wisdom we can find in our housebound experiences. One of the things that struck me about the survey data coming out in recent reports is that even as orders enforcing lockdown ease, people say they plan to spend more time at home. Our home renovation projects, both large and small, have highlighted the importance of where we live. Perhaps there's something to this. For a lot of people, this past year has felt like an unholy wasteland. 
They've not felt connected to a church or a community of faith, and hence they've felt disconnected from God. Online worship doesn't do it for them, and the new mediated forms of in-person worship feel cold and sterile. Staying at home spiritually has been off-putting. They've been trapped inside a room that doesn't feel anything like shelter or refuge. On one hand, we could wait until the return to normal and find ourselves back in the adventuresome world of the things that used to give us spiritual nourishment. But we could see that even then. We sense a bit of unrootedness, detachment from it all. That wouldn't be surprising. This pandemic has uncovered our interior lives and forced us to live in secluded places. And it's from those places, the life of personal prayer and devotion, everything else emanates. What happens in private, behind closed doors, is the root. Our walks with God, our meditations, our private prayers are deep and integral to spiritual life. And maybe in periods of busyness that isn't so apparent, but during these extended stay-at-home measures, this has all come to the fore. It seems we've got work to do in our homes, the places where we live, both physical and spiritual. Of course, these places may need more than a lick of paint or a new house pant, but that will be for us to discover. Nonetheless, we've seen during this pandemic that our interior dwellings need upkeep and renewal. We must care for where we live. So before we go rushing headlong back into church, perhaps we should take a look at where we are now and give our spiritual homes the attention they deserve. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for our world. We pray especially for the people of India and all places where coronavirus is devastating life. Strengthen all who work to relieve suffering and save lives. Help us to remember that we are one world and to be bearers of hope and change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, we pray for your church across the world. Be with all who seek you. We remember in our prayers today the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Kevin. We ask your blessing on the clergy and community of the churches of St. Andrews, Ardrossan and St. Peter's Dalry. Here at St. Mary's, we pray for everyone involved in the online coffee hour and for the full life and ministry of the cathedral. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our community. In our city, we pray for all who dedicate their lives and talents to the arts, especially to music, theatre and dance at this time of both challenge and possibility. Help us to value all the creativity of our great city and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you for all that brings us life and joy. We pray for those in pain, loneliness or isolation. We hold before you those who need our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray your eternal blessing on those who have died recently. And we remember especially at this time, 
Celia Scott, whose year's mind is today. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A significant part of our worship is to offer something to God, something which represents who we really are. We give to God from the very fruit of our lives. If you would like to join those who give money to enable the open, inclusive and welcoming ministry of this church to continue both online and from this building, then please do so. There's details of what to do on the website, thecathedral.org.uk. Just go there and click on Donate to St. Mary's Cathedral. And thank you. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work from chaos bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us, your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all. For by the cross eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden the mystery dawned that he whom they had lived, loved and lost is with us now in every place forever. Making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore, he renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the Spirit who sets the seal of freedom on all your beloved children. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. 
We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by the Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God is with us wherever we are. As we gaze in adoration, we feed on God in our hearts and minds, that we may in turn feed the world. O God, even as this broken bread was scattered over the hills and was gathered together and became one, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power, through Jesus Christ, forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power, working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, for ever 
and ever. Amen. It's been good to welcome a number of people in recent weeks who have only begun engaging with St. Mary's either online or in person fairly recently. If you're finding a way into this congregation, then do fill in a welcome card. These days you can find the welcome card on the website, thecathedral.org.uk. But now the blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.